That's my rosary. I'm going to talk about another uh, cool story at the end of this video. So stay tuned if you want to hear it. Um, let me talk about Prime Medicine. I don't think I talked about this company before. It became public in 2022. Um, yeah, I don't think I did because I actually just put it on my watch list a couple weeks ago. So, Prime Medicine is a leading biotech company dedicated to creating and delivering the next generation of gene editing therapies to patients. The company is leveraging its proprietary Prime Editing platform, a versatile, precise, and efficient gene editing technology to develop a new class of dif differentiated one-time, potentially cur curative genetic therapies designed to make only the right edit at the right position within a gene while minimizing unwanted DNA modifications. Prime editors have the potential to repair almost all types of genetic mutations and work in many different tissues, organs, and cell types. So it's worth noting Google owns over 12%. Um, so, and I think that's why they're a... Uh, it's like one of these gene editing companies that which is uh all the all the rage um, the float is thirty five million uh insiders own twenty six percent institutions own forty eight percent they got hundred and sixty five million in cash only seventeen million in debt. Um, they they closed the day today at eight dollars and three cents, and that's right in the middle of the two hundred and fifty day moving average of ten dollars and seven dollars. They got a one year target of seventeen dollars. Um, I don't know what else to say. Seems pretty interesting. Google, like I said, owns twelve percent. Um, just put it on your watch list. That's all. <laughs> and do what you like. Do do uh do what's right. Do the right thing. <laughs> do the right thing. That's that's what I'll say. But all right, let me get into Bartolo, Blessed Bartolo Longo. All right, let me read you about my man, Blessed Bartolo Longo. Bartolo Lunga was born in southern Italy in 1841, where he was raised by devout Catholic parents. He experienced great suffering at the age of 10 when his mother died. This would begin his path away from the Catholic faith. He attended the University of Naples to study law in 1861. At this time, nationalism was on the rise in Italy, and the Catholic Church was seen as a threat to the movement. General Garibaldi a crucial figure in the nationalist movement at that time, sought to eliminate the papal office altogether. Italy was simultaneously seeing a rise in interest in spiritualism and the occult. As a result, universities were breeding grounds for hatred against the Catholic Church. Um, <laughs> sound familiar? Isn't that funny? Back, even back then, um, same stuff happens. Universities were, you know, just like this said, it's breeding ground for, you know, they, you can't talk about God. You can't even talk about God in elementary schools or middle schools or high schools, let alone universities. I mean, they, these are just places of pure secular, secularism. Just, that's not to say college isn't important. You know, it's, it's great to go to college, but you just have to go on with, you know, good head on your shoulders, but it's hard to do when you're um, that college age because you're so impressionable. So <laughs> that's that's the hard part. It's easy to say now because I'm 42, but when you're 19, 20 years old, you know, it's, it's hard. So uh, to not be, you know, I don't want to use the term brainwashed, but you're just susceptible to you know, 
what what's going on and 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 what's going on in university is not anything to do with God or Jesus. <laughs> uh no. So that ain't happening. But um let's go back to the article. This is by Good Catholic, by the way. Goodcatholic.com. So shout out to goodcatholic.com. Here we go. Italy, all right. many of Bartolo Longo's professors were ex-priests turned nationalists, instilling hatred of the church into the impressionable minds of their students. Longo found himself swept up in the movement. Um, he later wrote, I too grew to hate monks, priests, and the Pope. In particular, I detested the Dominicans, the most form formidable, furious opponent, opponents of those great modern professors proclaimed by the university, the sons of progress, the defenders of science, the champions of every sort of freedom. It's exactly like today. Look what he said. The university, the sons of progress, look, progressives today, the defenders of science. Oh, you can't say anything. But people, when you say science, people just say science. I'm sorry, I always stray away from the article, but, uh, when you say science, that's not saying anything. Science is a observation in nature and an experiment. You make a hypothesis, you do an experiment. It's testable, it's repeatable, it's measurable. Um, so that's like an, uh, it's like a very lazy argument. People say like, oh, it, you know, this is for science. You have to be for science, but you're really just saying you have to be for authority. So whatever authority figure is saying, be for science. I don't know. That's a whole other subject. But all right. Bartolo Lungo became enchanted by spiritualism and the occult during his study at Naples, participating in sciences and practicing magic. He was empty, but had a thirst for the supernatural that led him further down the path of Satanism. He denounced God and preached blasphemy against the Catholic Church, actively leading souls away from Christ. He was eventually ordained a Satanic priest and promised his soul to a demon. That's another interesting thing too. <laughs> Sorry, I keep diverting to what I want to say, but because I was into like uh, Wicca and all that new age stuff many years ago. And I noticed, I remember in the community um, online, um, all the people in the community were very depressed. Um, so for a, 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 a quote unquote religion that just is all about love and, you know, all one with nature and the universe and all that garbage that they say, it all sounds lovey dovey, but it's not um it actually is like a it's a gateway to all that because bartolo longo he had the same thing he as soon as he was down with these pagans he started developing serious depression let me continue reading bartolo soon found himself sinking into a deep depression his family tried to express their concerns over the path bartolo longo had chosen but to no avail he became deeply troubled by anxiety paranoia confusion he was afflicted by terrifying diabolical visions that threw him into a cycle of declining health. His family prayed and desperately sought help for him. In response, a devout Catholic professor at the university began meeting with Bartolo Longo. He helped Bartolo to confront the psychological state he was in. Professor Pepe also convinced Longo to meet with a Dominican priest, Father Alberto Redente. After three weeks of meetings, Bartolo Longo was welcomed back into the church and given absolution on the Feast of the Sacred Heart in 1865. Professor Pepe invited Longo to live with him so that he could support him throughout his conversion. He introduced Longo to other faithful Catholics who would also serve as companions on Longo's journey back to God. Bartolo sought to make reparations for his past sins by performing charitable works and warning others of the dangers of spiritualism. He once interrupted a seance by holding up a medal of Mary and proclaiming, and proclaiming quote, I renounce spiritualism because it is nothing but a maze of error and falsehood. End quote. Although Bartolo began his journey back to God, 
he still found himself despairing over his own salvation. He was tempted to believe that God could not forgive him and struggled with forgiving himself for participating in pagan practices. His struggles were so severe that he contemplated suicide. One day while on business in Pompeii, Bartolo observed the poverty and ignorance of the people of Pompeii and saw that they were entrenched in spiritualism. Their this is a quote from Bartolo. Their religion was a mixture of superstition and popular tradition. For their every need, they would go to a witch, a sorceress, in order to obtain charms and witchcraft. End quote. Longo was still struggling with his own doubts and distressed, and distressed during this visit to Pompeii, but he had a powerful moment of, gra of grace. In his own words, One day in the field around Pompeii, I recalled my former condition as a priest of Satan. I thought that perhaps as the priesthood of Christ is for eternity, so also the priesthood of Satan is for eternity. So despite my repentance, I thought I am still consecrated to Satan and I am still his slave and property as he awaits me in hell. As I pondered over my condition, I experienced a deep sense of despair and almost committed suicide. Then I heard an echo in my ear of the voice of Friar Alberto repeating the words of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Quote, One who propagates my rosary shall be saved. End of quote. Falling to my knees, I explained, If your words are true, that he who propagates your rosary will be saved, I shall, reach, I shall reach salvation because I shall not leave this earth without propagating your rosary. End of quote. Bartolo realized that God had in fact forgiven him and that he could now help lead other strayed souls, like the people of Pompeii, back to God. Our Lady's promise helped Longo to discover his purpose, propagating the rosary. On October 7th, 1871, he became a Third Order Dominican, taking the name Brother Rosario. He dedicated himself to restoring the people of Pompeii's faith in God through devotion to the Rosary. He built the Basilica of Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary in Pompeii and founded orphanages, elementary schools, and a technical school to give the children of, to give the children of convicted criminals the opportunity to succeed. He wrote books, novenas, and prayer manuals on the rosary. He died on October 5th, surrounded by the orphans he loved and served. His final words were, My only desire is to see Mary, who saved me and will save me from the clutches of Satan. Wow, that's really beautiful. That's why I love Bartolo Longo. Um, um, I don't know, nothing more to say. <laughs> So if you want to see more about Bartolo, Blessed Bartolo Longo, and if you don't know what a blessed is, a blessed is just a notch below a saint. So he's basically on his way to become a saint. <laughs> so anyone can change. See how that is? He was a satanic priest, and he, uh, um, he's on his way to become a saint. <laughs> Very interesting. So I hope you all enjoyed that. I did. Um, I love learning about the pet, the saints. Oh my goodness. And all the, I just love that. And I hope you all learned something and have a beautiful, blessed night. All right. Bye-bye.